100,000 ER visits, 14,000 hospitalizations, and 420 deaths every single year. This one is no joke. We're dealing with something that's tasteless, colorless, and odorless. And you may have guessed, we're talking about carbon monoxide. The silent horror of family of four and their three pets all dying in their Ohio home from carbon monoxide. Married couple Cody and Shelby Allen, both in their 20s, were found dead of carbon monoxide poisoning in their central city home on Friday. A warning tonight from the Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department after a deadly carbon monoxide call. Three people, including a 14-year-old boy, are dead after an accidental carbon monoxide poisoning. Now before moving forward, I want to be super clear that nothing in this video is sponsored in any way, shape, or form. This is something that I had a couple of quick scares about, which I'll cover more later, that I realized I'm kind of naive about this topic, and I realized there's so much as I started to dive into this, there's just a ton of information out there that isn't readily accessible. It's not anything that I knew about anyway, so I wanted to put all of the information that you might need about this into one video so you don't have to spend many hours researching different cases, different threats, and different products to help us avoid these sorts of things in the future. Not only that, I'm also recording this just as winter is about to start because over half of the incidents of carbon monoxide poisonings happen between November and February each year. So that short four month period accounts for most of the carbon monoxide poisonings that take place. While carbon monoxide detectors like this one could have prevented many of these illnesses and often many of these deaths as well, there's quite a few things that we do inadvertently to prevent these guys from doing their job. First, let's talk about some of the signs of carbon monoxide poisoning. These are things that I wouldn't have recognized because I hadn't studied up on this, but it's pretty straightforward. Basically, anything that you feel like is a flu symptom minus a fever, if you're running a temperature that's different, but anything else that looks like a flu or feels like a flu could be carbon monoxide poisoning. Now the easy solution to this is get out. Get out of the house, get out of the space where you feel like there might be a possible threat. We're talking about things like headaches, dizziness, nausea, fatigue, just feeling that overall rundown feeling. Any of those things could be signs of carbon monoxide poisoning. And the problem is what carbon monoxide does is it actually globs onto your red blood cells and it prevents or blocks oxygen from getting into your bloodstream. It takes over and therefore affects your tissues, your heart, your lungs, your brain, everything. And then what happens is eventually you start to get really fatigued and tired, you pass out, and then you continue to breathe in and take in that carbon monoxide and it will kill you. This is very dangerous. It can happen within a matter of a couple of hours or it could stretch out over days of prolonged exposure. So it's definitely a quiet and silent threat, something that we need to take seriously. Another crazy thing about carbon monoxide is it takes very little of it to start to affect you. It's measured in what are called parts per million. This is a pretty common measurement for any airborne gases. For carbon monoxide, anywhere from zero to five is pretty typical if you have any fuel burning devices in your home, which most of us do. Furnaces, gas stoves, gas dryers and water heaters are four of the biggest culprits of this. Carbon monoxide poisoning doesn't just come from those fuel burning appliances, but it can also come from fires. So if you have a fireplace in your home, for example, and it's not vented properly, you could also become a victim of carbon monoxide poisoning. Now anything up to about 70 parts per million typically isn't gonna have a major impact on you, especially if you're taking it in small doses. So if you're just there for a couple of hours, you might not even notice it. Now if you're there for a longer period of time, six to eight hours or overnight, then you might start to get some dizziness and feel a slight headache as well as part of that. Again, very difficult to attribute that to carbon monoxide poisoning though. Now when we reach about 100 parts per million, that's when things start to get a little bit scary. Now most of the detectors out there are set to go off at right around 100 parts per million. At that point, we can start to notice some major dizziness, some headaches, some nausea, and it takes less time for us to be exposed to that in order for us to experience those symptoms. Once we reach that 150 to 200 parts per million range, you become disoriented. You might pass out, and then again, once that happens, you're just, you're in trouble. It's a bad situation. So a lot of times we've seen cases where there's 200, 300, 400 or more parts per million carbon monoxide, and that is just a recipe for disaster. Here in the United States, almost every state has laws that are specific to carbon monoxide detectors. Either they require everywhere in every home in the state for new builds, or they require it in most places or most counties, for example. Here in Utah, for example, we take part in the International Residential Code, or IRC, which dictates that you do have to have carbon monoxide detectors on each habitable level of a home 
at least for new builds. The laws around existing homes, however, is quite a bit different, and that will vary drastically from state to state, as well as from country to country. Now, believe it or not, about half of the people watching this video or that watch my channel in general are located outside the United States. So I did a quick look to see if those laws outside the US were similar to those in the US, and generally speaking, they are. All of the following countries require carbon monoxide detectors in all new builds. So that includes Canada, the UK, Ireland, New Zealand, Australia, and Germany. There's probably quite a few others, but those are the main ones that end up watching this channel. Now, France and Japan also require them in homes that have fuel burning appliances. As a dad, it recently struck me that I'm probably not doing a very good job at protecting my family when it comes to carbon monoxide. I haven't really paid any attention to the status of carbon monoxide detectors in my house. I've just assumed that we would be okay. So I decided to do an audit of my house and I'm a little embarrassed at what I found. I also found some of these little guys, which also are not carbon monoxide detectors. And when I finished the basement in our home, I was actually able to include, because it was not that expensive, some carbon monoxide and smoke detectors combined into one small unit. So I installed those. So while we do have partial coverage, a lot of this is actually null and void because you're actually supposed to replace your carbon monoxide detector every seven years. So within seven years of its manufacture date, you can check on the back and a lot of times they'll have it printed right on there. The smoke detector, for example, is from February of 2011 which is almost 13 years ago the other issue I've come across is when you're looking around the house and you see a spot like this this is where there's a mount for a carbon monoxide and smoke detector but there's nothing there why is there nothing there I'll bet you know the story because you're probably guilty of this too or maybe it's just me I don't know basically what happens is at 2 a.m. you hear beep. it wakes you up you're like oh my gosh no don't tell me there's a smoke detector going off somewhere. So you get up, you're starting to look for this thing, you stand underneath the smoke detector, and you hear a beep, and you can't tell if it's coming from the one above you, or one down the hall, or in a bedroom, or what. My wife gets up, she's helping me, she's standing under another one, and I swear it's coming from mine, she swears it's coming from hers. Later we discover it's coming from one in the bedroom that we didn't detect at all, or didn't even realize was there. So, any of those sorts of things can happen. We get the thing down, we put it in the linen closet because we just need some sleep, and I sandwich it between some blankets and pillows so I don't have to deal with that excruciating and infernal beeping. Maybe you've done this too, and then some time goes by and you realize you forgot to take care of that, and you've got this hole in your ceiling where there should be a safety device, but there isn't. Now to learn more about this and what's happening in reality, I called my brother-in-law, Greg, who is a paramedic, and I asked him, Tell me about carbon monoxide poisoning. How often do you get calls for this? And what kinds of things do you see in terms of poisonings, hospitalizations, or even deaths? And he said, we see it all the time. The problem is about half the time when we get a call, it's a false alarm. And he said, the reason for this, there's a few different reasons, really. One of them is because the carbon monoxide detector is expired. It's an older unit that just is out of date and should have been replaced a long time ago. Another one is the batteries haven't been changed them in a long time, and so it's working off low voltage and it's not really doing its job properly. And then a third one is that the cheapest carbon monoxide detectors possible are put into a lot of these homes and they just send off false alarms. They're just not that accurate. One final reason that he mentioned is that oftentimes carbon monoxide detectors are placed in the wrong area. There are specific reasons and rules for where these things should be placed. And we'll talk all about that in just a moment. So I decided because of all these false alarms, I wanted to start researching which ones were actually very reliable. So I started finding all of these different comparisons that were done with studies. I found one study, for example, that compared 38 different detectors at one time, which I thought was pretty great. And I saw reports from Consumer Reports, from Popular Mechanics, from CNET, and quite a few others, Chicago Tribune, all kinds. And in these, I kept seeing the same detector show up at or near the top of the list every single time. This one right here is the one I saw over and over as being extremely reliable, having really good reviews, and I poured through hundreds and hundreds of reviews on Amazon and other sites while I was doing all this research. Honestly, I spent about five hours going through all of this, so hopefully this saves you from having to do all that research yourself. So this first alert one was really good for a few reasons. By the way, the model number on this one is a CO615, and I'll put links to everything that we talk about here in the description below if you want to go check it out yourself. If not, totally fine, but they're there if you need them. Now, a few things about this. Number one, it does have a display right on it which shows the parts per million of carbon monoxide that are being detected, which is really helpful. Number two, this one has a dual power system. So it's got a battery backup in case you need anything if the power goes out, but you don't rely on the power all the time. You can just plug this in. And number three, the best part that I like about this quite a bit is that the power on this one is actually mounted right onto the back and clipped in. So you can just plug it into an outlet or you can remove that and it has a cable so you can put it somewhere else on the wall, around a corner, 
or maybe a little further away from that outlet that might not be in just the right place. This little device constantly showed up as one of the most reliable, if not the most reliable, carbon monoxide alarms that you can get on the market today. They don't cost too much. These are about $28 or $30. And again, links will be in the description below if you want to take a look for yourself. I mentioned a minute ago that we were going to talk about where to place your carbon monoxide detectors because that plays a huge role in how effective they are. A lot of these false alarms are because they're just placed in a spot that it's more likely to go off even if carbon monoxide is not detected. And that's another reason having a little screen on there makes a huge difference because then you can visually confirm, that, yeah, that's at 100 or higher number, for example, and not just trust that whatever it's going off, it's probably accurate, hopefully. So having the screen on there helps quite a bit in my opinion. But let's talk about where this needs to be. Carbon monoxide is slightly lighter than air, so it's going to rise at least a little bit. Putting it on the ceiling is okay, but it's not ideal because that's not where our breathing area is. So if there's a temporary higher level of carbon monoxide discovered maybe on the ceiling, for example, this guy's gonna go off if it's mounted up there, but maybe that dissipates pretty quickly and you're fine where you're breathing or where you're sleeping. So there are some basic guidelines as to where you should and should not put carbon monoxide detectors. So they should be near bedrooms where people sleep. In fact, that same IRC or International Residential Code I mentioned before, it also requires that they be installed outside each bedroom within 12 feet of the bedroom door. There should be one on each habitable floor of the house and they should not be in close proximity to any fuel burning appliances. They should not be in excessively humid areas such as your bathroom. They shouldn't be in direct sunlight. And lastly, they shouldn't be near any sources of blowing air like a vent or a fan or an open window. So keep that in mind when you're placing these. We know that the ceiling isn't the optimal place for placing your carbon monoxide detectors. So what is? Basically, you wanna put it as close to where you're going to breathe as possible. If it's in a bedroom, for example, and you're spending most of your time lying on the bed, then you wanna put it at that same height where your head is. Now, the truth is, the more of these you have, the better, and it doesn't matter that much exactly what height you put these at. That said, carbon monoxide has almost the same weight as the air surrounding it, and it tends to permeate the air, meaning it should be able to detect at basically any height along the wall, even on the ceiling. The optimal placement is gonna be where your head is, but even placing it on the ceiling or even close to the floor, like plugging it directly into an outlet is okay as well. So now that we know which carbon monoxide detector is reliable, we know where to place it. There's one thing that was kind of bugging me, which is I thought it would be really good to have a smart carbon monoxide detector that I could get an alert on my phone if it goes off. I travel a few times throughout the year. I wanna make sure that everything's safe at home. If we're just out of the house and the kids are home, for example, I wanna make sure that I'm getting notified if something's going wrong at home. So with that, I started to look at those and I found a few things. One, they're really quite expensive. They are usually two, three, four times more expensive than a non-smart or a dumb carbon monoxide detector. The second thing I found is that they didn't have great ratings a lot of the times. So they would actually be something that would be a lower rating or unreliable or lower quality or wouldn't last as long as their traditional counterparts. And the third thing I found is they often require some sort of a subscription in order to use them. So not too excited about any of those. I wanted to still be able to use my $30 one here that I put all the research and I know is a good quality one, but I still wanted to get those notifications on my phone. So I came up with a few ideas where you can get this working for probably free. And if not, maybe just a few bucks based on what you've got in your house already. So the first thought that came to my mind was I use Wise cameras all over the house, whether you like Wise Cam or not. One of the things they have built into them is an alert for when a smoke detector or carbon monoxide detector goes off. It's a type three or type four alarm. And so if they have either of those going off, they're actually able to send you a message and a notification to let you know that that's happening. Now we've got wise cams all throughout the outside of our house and we've got a handful of them inside the house as well. And so it's really nice to know that I'm covered there and I've made sure that those are set up in the app. So I thought with that, let me see what other camera systems have that functionality built in did some research, again, try to save you some time here, and here's what I found. WiseCam has it, like I mentioned. Arlo also has it built in. NestCam has it, but only if you have a Nest Aware subscription. Ring has it, but you have to buy a separate $35 device plus pay a subscription for that. And then Eufy also has it, and they have a, also a separate device that costs $40 if you have a Eufy cam. And with each of those, they recognize the T3 and T4 alarms, which are pretty common for different detectors and alarms. Now, if you have a Blink or a TP-Link CASA security camera, they just don't support that. Then lastly, you can get a Philips Hue camera that pairs with a Nest Protect smoke alarm, and those two will work together 
Problem is that's a pretty expensive setup. Almost everything from Philips Hue is nice, but expensive. And then you have to have the smoke alarm, which costs over $100 typically as well. Now with these little Wise cams right here, the cool part is these cost about 20 bucks for the basic old school one. I think they even call it the uh, old school version. And it's just a 1080p signal, but you can actually point this at your detector, for example. And so you can see the screen on here if you're pointing that at it, which could be really cool. So you have an exact parts per million check-in if you want that while you're out and about. So just something to consider. You don't need a subscription for this, but that's only if you wanna see the live stream and I think you get some recorded events but the basic plan of this doesn't require subscription, which is nice. Now, after looking into all of these different security cameras, I realized there's something that I had read about one time and started going down this rabbit hole a little bit where you probably don't even need the cameras at all because you probably have something in your home today that will help you with this. And that is the voice assistance that many of us are using in our homes. So I have Amazon Echo devices throughout our house. That's the ecosystem that we chose to go with. You might have Apple HomePods or Google Nest Hubs, anything like that. All three of those actually have a system built in that will be able to work with detecting these alarms and then being able to let you know, even at a distance, even if you're out of the house, a notification on your phone that these alarms are going off, which is really handy. Now that said, there's a little setup involved. So with Alexa, you actually need to use Alexa Guard, and mine's going off right now. And so you have to enable that, and you also have to set it to away mode. Now this is something we struggle with because almost always someone's home, which kind of defeats the need for that. But keep that in mind, you have to be in away mode if you're using the Alexa Guard. Then the other side is the Google Nest Hub, and that one actually offers this to you only if you use their paid subscription service, unfortunately. So if you have one of these services, be sure to check that you've got this set up and check into if there's any subscription fees. If you know more about that, feel free to leave that in the comments section below. Really only got the setup with the Guard for our Amazon Echo devices. So now that we've covered all of this, there's one last thing I wanna share with you that is directly tied to it that gave me a little scare recently. My wife and I were out of the house my oldest daughter called and said, Dad, I think I smell gas, natural gas in the house. And I said, okay, get out of the house, go into fresh air, go to a friend's house. We're coming home right now, we'll go check it out. As soon as we walked in the door, we felt, or we smelled just a faint sniff of natural gas. It was pretty weak, fortunately. And once we were in the house, we didn't smell anything. We went around sm sniffing everything, checking, looking for connections. We have a gas stove, so that's the first culprit typically is that gas is being put out. Somebody probably had left the stove on for a little bit, but then caught it and turned it off. But it did produce that kind of smell in there, but not at levels that were too terrible, at least for our health anyway. So I started looking into this too to see how big of an issue this is, especially when compared to carbon monoxide. And I found that natural gas leaks were involved in over 6,600 home fires in 2020. And since 2010, there have been more than 2,700 gas leak incidents across the country that were considered significant, and 362 of those resulted in explosions, which is super scary stuff. I mean, we've all seen those news reports where a house just blows up and it turns out there's a gas leak. I mean, it, is, it doesn't get scarier than that, especially as someone responsible for kids. Now, 700 people have been injured in these incidents and more than 140 have been killed because of these natural gas leaks. So that's nothing to balk at. Fortunately, that is a much, much smaller number than carbon monoxide. Uh, natural gas, we tend to smell it, and that smell, I found out later, is actually added to the natural gas to make it easier for us to detect. We should not be smelling that. If we are, that makes it easier for us to know that it's there and we can address the issue. So once again, I started digging into it and found that there are some top rated natural gas and carbon monoxide detectors that you can get that cover two birds with one stone, basically. So I looked into that and the one that came up on top, again, just same as the other one, almost across the board, was either at the top of the list or right near the top of the list was this one by, I wanna say it's Kitty. I don't know if that's what, how it's pronounced, but it's a gas and carbon monoxide detector. This is a five in one. It basically covers natural gas, methane, propane, other explosive gases and carbon monoxide. So it's got everything covered in there. It does have your display with your parts per million right on there. And just like the first alert one, it has that nice little adapter on the back where you can plug it directly into an outlet or you can extend it with a cord and place it elsewhere on the wall. One thing I'm trying to do to make this easier for you to get right to these products is I'm creating a little idea list on the Amazon store that I have and it will show you exactly the products that I'm talking about all in one place. 
So you can click on the link in the description. That first one for the idea list will take you right to a store where you can see each product that I mention in any video that I'm doing, which hopefully you find helpful and makes it a little bit easier for you to get to those in case you're interested. I'll also use the little shopping icon that you can see at the bottom corner to see if any of these are at Lowe's or Home Depot, and you can buy them directly from there and pick them up locally if you choose to go that route. So stay safe out there. Remember to keep those carbon monoxide detectors up to date. Make sure they're replaced at least every seven years, that the batteries are fresh on those, and that you're doing you and your family a service by making sure that you're staying safe and not having to worry about carbon monoxide poisoning. Also make sure they're in the right place. I think that makes a really big difference as far as the placement throughout your home. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching.